day. I was using our dry iron engine, a collaboration to do with a Swedish distillery called Perno. Uh, also using uh, Regal Rogue Daring Dry from Sydney, it's a dry white vermouth. Ville uh, Blanc, it's a French aperitif, uh, arom aromatized wine, um, and Italicus, so it's an Italian bergamot liqueur. Uh, basically, very citrusy, very crisp cocktail. Uh,
region in Yarra Valley than there are you know, across all of Australia. Mm -hmm. So the arts is actually a really important part of our, um, of our culture. Yeah. So we, our vision, which may be lofty, um, but, and, but really dedicated to it, is that we would love the Yarra Valley to be known for food, wine and the arts. And so what we want to talk to you is a little bit how we would propose to go about that. So, so far, uh, we have recently applied for um, DGR status, which means that as a Yarra Valley Arts organisation, as a cultural organisation, we can get tax <coughs> deductibility and that is always really helpful in terms of income raising. Uh, we received a really generous um, $130,000 gift from the Margaret Lawrence Foundation, uh, which has enabled us to actually secure a gallery space, and this is not all of it, and to, um, and to actually put on our gallery director. So we've, been, we've employed Andrew um, too as our gallery director, and I'll explain shortly why he's so amazing. Um, we've got heaps of volunteers who are actually helping to make this, get this um, up and running, and we've got our first exhibitions up. So you've known the building is this, and you will know that up here was the framers, and uh, there was the, the midwives were next door, and uh, and now that we've taken over on the first of February, we've made a few changes. So with the support of loads of our volunteers, we have stripped up the carpet, painted the walls, which were black. It was actually kind of dark, and you couldn't. The gallery wasn't. It was hard. You know, it was pretty dark and um, we painted throughout. We accidentally dropped a bit of the ceiling and realised how wonderful it was. <laughs> and so we actually turned that into a feature. And so this is about 60% there. So we've made a lot of progress. And if you've heard some noises, like you might have even heard some, we had some classical violinists doing, um, checking out our acoustics, because one of the things we'd like to do here is perhaps do some musical soirees. We have a lot of possibilities in here. So this has been during March and April. And as you can see, there's already a marked transformation in this space. Um, we've even cleaned up the outback and we like to get mo mo maximum benefit out of our um, gallery director here. So we shoved him on the roof, got him and gave him a gurney and said go to it. Um, <laughs> and yeah, we've had heaps of support from our, from our um, members volunteers, and in fact people who aren't even members, just people in the community who said like, we really like what you're doing and we're willing to help. So a lot of you know too, we've been wandering around the streets going, hi, here we are, we're going to do this thing, what do you think about it? And we've been getting amazing support from you guys and we're really, really grateful for that because I think you've given us the courage in some ways to say, okay, this is going to be not just our ideas, it feels like what we would like it to be is something that comes and it's supported and feels like it comes from all of us um, and something that would be good for Hillsville and something that's good for the broader Yarra Valley and then for all the people that are associated with it. So moving forward, our vision, so we are, so, so Yarva, why, what's this Yarva thing? What does that mean? Well, it's actually, we've turned it into a word, it's a new word in the lexicon and um, it did sort of inspire Yarra Valley was a little bit how it came, but actually the word Yarra is an ancient Sanskrit word that means it was a grain, a bit like barley, and it was life-giving, had life-giving properties, and we reckon the arts has life-giving properties, and so Yarra is, so we're the Yarra Gallery, Gallery and Arts Hub, so it's not only a gallery, we have next doors, we'll show you, there's going to be a contemporary video um, uh, art space, um, we'll have documentaries that can be running in that, we're going to call it the dark room, um, and we also have the studio, and that is a workshop space that we'll be able to host um, workshops and meetings, and you'll see. Um, so we have, uh, yeah, so we have, our, our vision is that then we'll be able to host a whole kind of things. So from music, musical soirees, we might have um, sort of groovy film movie nights. Uh, we, we want to have some social uh, things that can happen, which might be free, which means we can start to bring, bring in the community um, in multiple ways. So not just artistically, but like, well, we have an art base, art space, um, but in ways that are accessible across different age groups, children, uh, men's groups, all kinds of things. 
um, maybe a meeting space. We have a beautiful space next door. A dinners, we might do some really beautiful dinners in the gallery. And we want it, if our intent is that this becomes a really amazing kind of space that's very vital, has a lot going on, and that we're integrated into this community, that we tapped in with you, and that it becomes an energetic space. We've got a really good location. I mean, it's pretty good on the main street here with the pedestrian crossing. We've got the balcony, which we think is just right for Sunday afternoon jazz on that afternoon. So, you know, um, so yeah, that's where we're at. Um, we do have a three-year plan around how we plan to get there. So we really want to kind of build this as being a gallery that's really well respected. And, um, and the most important thing going to the hub idea is that we want, to, we want to create an experience so that when people come here they feel like, oh yeah, I went to Four Pillars and I went to some of the wineries and I had some food, I went to you know, wherever and had lunch. And, and then there's this experience that I have here through the Arts Hub which is like, this is wow, this is actually taking it up a notch. I now have an extra dimension, and this is why you should come to the Yarra Valley, this is why you should be here, this is really cool, I'm gonna tell my 15,000 Facebook followers. <laughs> um, we have like 70 current artist members. Um, by opening it up and making more focus on the arts as opposed to visual art, uh, we are looking to expand that membership base significantly, and um, you know, across those different art forms, um, we're also looking at doing outreach programs. So it's not just about this building. We would like to expand what Yarva's doing so that it's out there in the streets. So we've talked to some people here in this town and some of you around maybe doing some street art. Um, there are some amazing ones. We could actually build some ways of bringing extra interest into the town in multiple ways. So the possibilities that we want to talk to you about. Um, and there are some other things, and Andrew's going to talk about some of our programs in a little bit. Um, and we just want to be really known for our, like, as an arts body. So people will hear about more about, um, we would like to have more influence over that. We've got some thoughts about how we do that. Um, we're saying that you know, we want to be able to move from having, you know, medium level engagement with you as traders to be able to actually, we really, really, really want to have a strong level of engagement. We, we're not just sort of touting, we don't want to just do our stuff and in isolation. We very much want to be actively engaged with you, um, hearing your thoughts around what's important and how we can best support and grow together. That's really important to us. Um, and then, you know, we really want to have this as being a significant and credible draw card for tourism as well as you know, in this region. Food, wine and the arts. So what do we as Yava hope to contribute? So we are, um, you know, we hope to, we will attract new visitors and build audiences. And we have a strategy around how we start our program, especially our gallery program, and how we're gonna draw new people in and Andrew will talk to that. Uh, we do have a powerful network of promoters there are, and members, you know, they all have their own networks. So as we start to, I mean, even just our volunteer effort to clean this place up, seriously, we put out a couple of emails and we had like 20 or 30 people here like stripping down walls and ripping up carpet. It was amazing. So they all have influence and we want to leverage that. Um, we, our intent is to help build the reputation, continue to build the reputation of Peelersville and Yarra Valley. Uh, education and thought leadership that's kind of really around the arts and we want to get more and more involved in um, how the arts is represented. Um, opportunities to cross promote with you. We would very much like to be able to promote each of your businesses and we would love it if you would help promote us as well. Um, and we see that this is going to bring increased expenditure to the town. I think it just, we have enough, we have an opportunity together to really um, um, drive interest and momentum around our, around where Hillsville's heading and where um, the region is heading. And we'd like to partner with you around that. Um, these are just some of the things that we see as being part of the arts, I said. So, you know, we see art exhibitions, music, performance, poetry, literature, dance, video, film, classes, lectures, dinners. Um, and outreach. And at this point, I'd like to hand over to Andrew before I do that. I'll just give you a bit of a heads up. He gets embarrassed now. Don't worry, it's all right. Um, when we decided that we wanted to find a gallery director, we um, 
yeah, it, we knew that it was going. It needed to be, as you said, we're creating something which is a, a hub, and it needs to be thriving. It needs to be an experience. And we were really blessed because we found Andrew, who happens to have been. Many of you know the art scene in Melbourne, or just art scene generally. Um, there is the No Vacancy Gallery in Fed Square. Um, well, ten years ago, Andrew set that up. He created that. Um, out of a dream or out of an idea, he boldly, brashly wrote to a construction or whoever in the building that they weren't using and said, hey, I want to do this big community art gallery for whatever, and do you think you might give me this space for free? <laughs> and uh, they did. So they gave him 10 to 6 months initially, and then they gave it to him for 12 months. And then he carried on a business for the next 10 years and created and grew it and, and created one in QV, and he's a little bit of an entrepreneur, so he also set up a to uh, set up a hatted restaurant in Preston, as you do, um, and a few other businesses. So he's actually an entrepreneur and a business person, which is really great because here we are in a region, in an area where we want to have, we want to be able to integrate with business, and this is someone who understands both community and business, and so we're really happy that Andrew's come on board. Um, and the only reason that's happened is because he decided that, you know, as a personal lifestyle choice to spend more time with his children, he wanted to sell off all his enterprises and have it do something exciting and community based, but where he didn't actually have to own it. So good for him, good for us, good for you. So at this point, I'd love to hand over to you, Andrew. No pressure. That's <laughs> uh, Thank you, guys. Um, first and foremost, I, I, I feel really welcomed in the community. It's, it's quite exceptional um, coming in from an outsider. Um, and, and, and feeling so welcome from, from the people that I work with, from local businesses, and it's and it just a testament to, to Hillsville. Um, and I hope I can and add some value to what you're, existing, what you're currently doing. Uh, I guess for, for me, programming has a lot to do with it. And, and it's about drawing different audiences, what we talked about. And, and that only has benefit for, for all of you guys, because if I can bring a different audience to, to your businesses and to the area, I hope that it can be better, beneficial to you. Um, we have, a, for the first four months, we've, we're, we're allowing our members to exhibit here, and I think that's um, a good way of kicking off Yava, is allowing our members to exhibit here within the first, first four months. And then um, come September is when I start curating shows and start programming from there on there. Um, I think the thing is, with me, the programming style that I've adopted is, is that of partnership and collaboration. And it's about collaborating with businesses or existing institutes. And in September, we're, we're partnering with Tarawara. They've got the Archibalds coming. Mm. I've managed to secure um, Vincent Fantuzio's 30 by 30 collection, which is, he did 30 works of 30 notable Australians. And so that'll, that'll be here, but that sits alongside our Yarra Valley artists. And so that link to bring high profile artists back to Yarra Valley artists is the key of our program for the next 12 months. And it's to raise that profile, it's to bring a new audience, and I think you know, that's the key for us moving forward and, and what we want to adopt for future programming. Um, in September, we've got a big show, Harley Manifold, he's an ex-VCA alumni, and that goes back to partnership. We have a partnership with VCA. We're trying to bring our education program to align with our galleries, um, exhibitions. So he'll be doing a residency out here for, th uh, for 30 days where he'll be painting areas of the Yarra Valley, high social media content, big, big pool, um, a good story, and it's about creating those stories. And it's about bringing people to the area. Um, he did that with Big Tourism last year and had a huge success. Um, and then in November, we pay tribute to Margaret. Margaret Lawrence was um, kind enough, well, we, it's where we get our funding from for this project. And so it's nice to pay tribute to that. And again, she has a 600 um, strong collection of ceramics we're teaming up with the Yarra Valley artists. And it, it always comes back to Yarra Valley. And then we've got some other exhibitions programmed. Um, you know, I'm trying, trying to draw 
on the 10 years of running a gallery, so calling in some big favours and getting those headlining artists here to exhibit with our, with, with our artists. Beyond that, um, we talked about our outreach program, our education program. We have a school education program that we, we want to introduce straight away. We've got a men's meetup, and it's about social impact, and it's about getting beyond these, these gallery walls and getting in there into the community. And I think that if we can do that, I think Yava will be successful in our outreach program, is getting out there in the community. Not just people who are involved in the arts, but looking to bring new audiences in. Um, apart from programming the gallery and trying to get the gallery off the ground, we have some really large scale projects I'm trying to bring to the area. This was lucky to fall on my lap just through a connection. But it's about bringing some high profile events to the area, large numbers of people that hopefully you guys benefit from. And this is one thing in particular, it's Rose Street Markets. Um, they also have Heidi Markets, they just opened last year. And, you know, is a huge draw card for the area. It allows our local artists, practitioners, designers to be a part of this. But it also brings people from Melbourne and draws, and I keep coming back to it, draws a new audience. It's bringing new people out here. Um, Rose Street Markets, these are just some of the statistics, you know, that Heidi saw a 300% increase in their gallery um, attendance. Um, you know, we have 150 to 200 stores over that one month, over this, over like, let's call it the second Saturday of every month. And, you know, over, over two um, seasons, we're close to see, see close to 50,000 people come through. And if you were to do the breakdown of $25 per person, you get, a, you get an average of, you know, 850000 brought into the area in terms of spending. Which is, which is good to see, and it's positive. You know, it's bringing people to the area, um, and it's good marketing opportunities, it's all of those things. Um, you know, with that, you know, I've been doing commercial galleries for the last 10 years, and, and a lot of that success has to do with partnerships. It's collaborating with people, it's setting up sponsorship deals, and if any of you guys have any ideas of, about doing shows, and, and wanting to do it, look at other avenues of marketing and, and use art as that, as that vehicle, um, happy to explore any opportunities like that. Uh, I've been involved in some public art programming over the last 10 years, worked with lots of councils, worked with companies in terms of activations, and you know we all know the success of street art in Victoria, and especially in Melbourne. And my gallery started predominantly doing street art. And, and we've just seen we had a meeting with Yarra Valley Tourism, the success of Rome, bringing people here to the area. And it, it does have that ability. And if we can create and, and use this as a tool to bring people to the area, I think it's something that we should look at. Um, you know, we can look at engaging small businesses, using the wall space, and activating the space, activating it, turning it over, changing it up. It changes the landscape of the whole street. So, um, that's where I fit into this. I'm keen to sit down with all of you and, 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 and see where this journey goes. <laughs> so. Thanks. <laughs> Um, yeah, so we're, if anybody has any thoughts, um, yeah, Andrew's the person to talk to. So we, um, we thought after this, you could ask some questions. If you've got questions, we could have some discussion. Um, we can have some little chats around. And actually, I forgot to mention, sorry about this, that um, I've asked, we asked Adrian Jeffs, who's a documentary filmmaker, actually a very celebrated documentary filmmaker, to help us record um, our journey. And he's making some videos tonight, so I hope that's okay. If anyone doesn't want to be videoed, let us know. It's too late. Sorry, it's a bit late now. Oh, it's just quite <laughs> But let us know and then we'll make sure we export you. Um, uh, at this point, I'd very much like to bring, uh, ask Jan to say a few words. So Jan 
is the, um, the, the she the chairs the Margaret Lawrence Foundation and has been uh, largely responsible for helping us receive this yeah, philanthropic grant. So. Okay, so just for one or two minutes, just to give you a, um, a sense of, uh, so Margaret Lawrence was born in 1940 and she died in 2004, the age of 90. She was a client of mine um, uh, and uh, and became quite a close friend for the last six years of her life and I was her philanthropic advisor and helped her set up her charitable foundation and to explore what her deep interests were. She was an absolutely amazing woman um, in every sense and I won't go into all of that now but she was very, very bright. Uh, she never married, never had any children. She went to Melbourne University in the 30s um, where I must say she joined the uh, Carlton Football Club and she was a member, she went to every football match for her entire life when she was in Melbourne until she died, you know, until six weeks before she died. Um, but she was also, uh, for a short period of time, quite a well-known um, television personality in terms of a quiz master because she was, she was so bright. But um, she, her grandfather had established uh, the Lawrence um, soap and fragrance business in the 1880s and then her father ran that. And then he died suddenly in 1952, and she took over the management of his estate, um, but uh, and, and and invested the money. So she I set up this foundation, and she was interested in art, education, and social issues or community development. And as Andrew said, she has a, she had an extensive ceramics exhibition uh, collection. Um, however, she was interested across the across the arts. And so since 2001. We've been uh, giving away uh, a few hundred thousand dollars every year to a range of organisations and charities. Um, I, by chance, became aware of Yarra Valley Arts and what they uh, were doing and had been doing for 30 years last um, September when, uh, or October when uh, Kate said that they undertook a, a program. And, and their vision, and I was incredibly impressed by the skills and the knowledge and the vision and the desire and the raw material that exists in this community as one that was actually absolutely achievable. Um, so we were able, with the trustees, Perpetual is the other trustee with me, we were able to uh, make a gift of 130,000 uh, with a commitment for three to five years. That's not a very much of money, actually, when, you, when you've got a commercial gallery and, and, um, and one salary and getting things going, but it is enough and there's a huge um, volunteer support and that was important and because of the indications of what was happening in this town and this region, um, and all of those, uh, all of those donors. So her legacy, um, I think, will have a long-lasting effect potentially for this whole community. Um, there are heaps of opportunities. It, we have been blessed in terms of um, people who've who've come out of you know who've be, be, become available to do this. So it's the beginning of a journey, and I think it's a, it's it's hopefully a legacy that will, um, will you know see good value for many, many people, not just the artists, which is important because the community arts based. And um, one final thing, University of Melbourne, yeah. Victorian College of the Arts, um, has got also a $25,000 evaluation gift, um, and they are going to conduct a longitudinal study to see what is the impact socially, culturally, and economically um, of this gift and the uh, uh, collaboration with a tertiary arts institution and with local government, because we work working closely with uh, with local government as well, and the trade is, what, what, what is the impact over one, two and three years? Mm. Um, and we hope that this will become a model for other regional arts, broad-based arts organisations and townships across Australia. So that will sort of just kick off the beginning of that evaluation process in about June or July. And, you know, it's a we'll set what's the benchmarks and then it'll be measured progressively. And, um, and they will be talking to businesses as well as artists, as well as tourists, and, and look at what, uh, what, is the, what is the resilience, what is the um, influence, what's, what's happening as a result of, of this initiative. So that's it, hand back to Kate, and um, thanks. There you go. So um, that's what we wanted to talk to you about and share with you. We do have social media, so you can back on social media pages.
Um, we also have a website, and um, but we're very mostly we're very interested in partnering with you and seeing how we can actually and, and working with you as we progress this, and we'd like your input and really and and support in how we shape that. So um, at this point, I mean, do you have any? Does anyone have any questions or comments? Oh, oh my gosh, that's oh, nice. nice. <laughs> Hi, Cora. You're talking about the um, market. Where are you planning on holding it? Oh, we're looking at options right now. So what we need is we need a space that can fit 150 to 200 stalls that has parking um, and that we can, um, that people can get to basically. So we would love to find a suitable, we've got one possibility, we're just not sure if it's going to be right in terms of parking, but we'd love an option. If anyone here has an option in terms of space, we definitely, this is a real goer, we just, we can't really say who it is because we don't know who it is. We need to, haven't been able to secure that yet, but it's a really an amazing opportunity. And, and Ideally we'd like it to be as close as possible to the centre of Healesville so that it really drags people into the town because we want to be able to support all the businesses here. Yeah. But how are you connected to this space? That's what I was wondering. How do we connect it? Oh, well, for yeah. us, it's part of the outreach program. So we, we, we kind of want to build it that Yava is the leader and, sh you know, mover and shaker in terms of bringing the arts into Hillsville and the Yarra Valley. So mm -hmm. everything doesn't have to be in this building. Okay. That's yeah. what I wanted to know. Yeah. I was thinking. We'll promote it. Yeah, yeah. And we'll right. sing it from the treetops. Mm -mm. Uh, but it doesn't need to be in this building. Yeah. And actually, even on that, going to the street art idea, I mean, this is a separate thing, right? I was gifted, a, it's all this bit weird, I've been gifted a bus for good works. So we have this idea, it's been converted into a little home inside, an elderly couple, it was their dream. Um, but um, anyway, for some reason, it's now in my lap, and we, we're thinking it could be an awesome art project. So decorating it, and imagine, you know, having this transformed bus on the exterior, which could represent the Yarra Valley, have cool art, or ideas around food, wine and the arts and have it travel around the valley. Like how cool would that be? It becomes a little, you know, showpiece. Um, you know, we all know like in Denmark and Norway, the trolls and you know how how they've really transformed that country and people go on tours to find these things. You know, there are places now that decorate electrical boxes. There are so many things that we can do outside of the narrow confines of a gallery space. We don't we do not see this as a two dimensional gallery. It is not. This is a gallery and arts hub, and it's all about creating a thriving art space that affects all of us, socially, economically, and artistically, you know, culturally, creatively. You know, creative and cultural communities are rich communities where people feel engaged, they feel that they want to be here, they're attracted to it, like moths to a flame, they want to be in it. And we want to create that kind of a community. And, and we have our part to play, and you are all an intrinsic part of that. Thanks, Cora. I've got two walls that can be painted on if someone wants to paint on. Yeah, excellent. Yay. Yay. <laughs> We're very inspired. We went ready to find something like the silos so that people will come. Yes, well, the thing is, we would actually, I went to Benalla to the Wall to Wall Street Festival last weekend and so did separately Jan. And yeah, it's so cool what they've done there. Yeah. It's absolutely amazing. Absolutely incredible, and I think we have the walls. There's so many walls here. I well, think we don't have to do yeah. what everybody else does. Yeah. We can do it differently. Yeah. 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 Laneways. Yeah. Well, we'll have to. Yeah. We don't have stuff. No, no. But I'm yeah. saying that's yeah. people yeah. Not yeah. are aware, and people travel to yeah. see yeah. them. They do. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So we need they something they like that. Yeah. 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 So there are many possibilities. I mean, it's, we're not. So think, we just think it's a good idea, right? And if you think it's a good idea, then. Yeah, yeah. Are uh, you how you were involved in the out of speech debate in the first year? Yes. Um, the out of speech for next year, I was thinking we could do street art as a debate. Oh, cool. That's great. Yeah. Also, Cora, actually, the art of speech was Cora's baby, as along with many other things that Cora does. Anyway, yes. Mm. Will you charge to come to the exhibitions, or are you? The, the are you asking about an economic model? Yeah. Okay. So we don't envisage charging to come to exhibitions like this. We are, we will, you'll see in a minute, we have a studio space in there. So we're developing a workshop program where artists and or people in the arts or even people that have meetings, we're setting up uh, workshops 
and then we'll have an income sharing model with the people who are going to run the workshop, so that builds some income. Um, we also have things like the Maker's Market, which is a really good opportunity for us because the people who are running that are going to give us a percentage of that money, so that goes straight into the uh, to Yava, uh, which means it makes us more sustainable. Um, we're looking at opportunities for, uh, we're taking a multi approach. Initially we're going to need support, we're looking for further philanthropic support and we figure by getting DGR status it makes us more commercially attractive to give us some money to help support us, um, but ultimately over time we would like to become more and more, uh, have creative ways of becoming more and more financially independent. But, you know, the reality is we're a not-for-profit, you know, not-for-profit community arts organisations all over the world, um, you know, they struggle to pay, we're paying commercial rent, we're paying 40 grand a year in rent, um, you know, these things don't pay for themselves, so we do have to fund it. So we will do some things like, we might do some really nice fancy you know, dinner for 12 or 20, right down the middle of the gallery, have a really good notable speaker, um, and, and pay for those events. Uh, we'll have um, other, there'll be some other uh, ticketed events that will take place in the spaces. And then we'll have also some free events that will mean that it's accessible to all people of all, uh, you know, income abilities. We will sell. Oh, sorry, yeah, do. Sorry. <laughs> I forgot. We're going to sell art. So one of the most important things that, of course, you know, again, we're attracting all these people and bringing new audiences that, that people are actually going to, yeah, buy art and, and engage people who are engaged in the arts, whether it be dance or poetry. But if they're artists, like artists on the wall here, um, then we want to be able to now sell their art. And as we bring in, one of the reasons we want to bring in national artists and pro profile artists is because they, firstly, they do bring in new audiences. We can get more media attention, and then it gives exposure to our Yarra Valley artists. It means every the bar is lifted for everyone, and it gives us opportunities to be inspired and to uh, to reach new audiences. Does that answer the question? Yeah, it did. Um, I was going to ask, how are you going to sell art? <laughs> yeah, we're going to sell art. Yeah, we're going to sell art. I thought it's pretty important. Yeah, 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 yeah super yeah. important. So, so obvious, I forgot to mention the most obvious, well, mm. one of the most, mm. it's not only art, it's the arts, but yes. Mm. Mm. As long as you don't make a profit. Well, as long as we don't end up making, yeah. it'd be pretty hard to make a profit when you're paying 40000 a year in rent and you've got to pay, a, you know, even one wage, right? So, yeah. Oh, <laughs> we're not, you know, imagine having, you know what it's like, you're in business, you know what it's like to employ, and you, you need to earn, yeah, it's business, right? So, yeah. Profit's easy enough to spend. Yeah. yeah, we can work it out. We just have to not have a profit at the end of the year. No, 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 no. Actually, you can make a profit. Yes, yeah. Non-profit non means... You can't distribute it. That the surplus right. is not distributed to the owner. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Case, but put back into the business. So, obviously, right. that is what we... We want it to be a commercially successful yeah. gallery yeah. for a non-profit charitable yeah. organisation yeah. that will have then enough money to help contribute to the costs. But, uh, so we don't personally benefit. So we can't get we don't get money in our pockets when we make profit. That's basically what it is. Yeah. So quite right. Um, and yeah. So and like you touched on in, in terms of that market, if that if that can bring a large amount of income for the gallery, and it allows for capacity building. So it allows us to to go out there and, and not so much think about the financials and do some community based things and not necessarily worry about whether we're going to return on it, but look at social impact and other things like that, though those are, the, are, are going to be huge benefits yeah. for doing those sort of things. And, and if I, and that's a big thing. It, it eases the pressure. Yeah, it does. It does. Yeah. You know, and you know, well, I've had small businesses for ten years. Small businesses are not easy, and um, if they can find ways of bringing revenue in feed into that and ease the pressure and allow us to do have some artistic capabilities. I think that's, you know, yeah. And so if you have or if you know of a space around Hillsville that you would like to host the uh, Maker's Market, talk to Andrew. <laughs> um, just an acre. Just by the way, yeah, an acre, is that all we need? An acre and some car park. Yeah, acre and car parking. And, and then what happens is actually everything's brought in. All of the security and the parking and the and the 
Toilet. clean up toilets, in the toilets yeah. and the and everything. Get, All the get, facilities are boarded. naming rights, naming rights. Oh, yeah. Rights. So it'll be country smart, mm. maker's market. Right. Or giant wow. steps. Or giant steps. Four pillars or yeah. KG yeah. or... And that's about keeping... Grace Burn yeah. or whatever. Yeah. So, I mean, there are possibilities there. We'd, yeah. We would like it to be something that yeah, has lots of opportunities at multiple levels. Um, any other questions, or what do you think? Is it a good idea? Oh yeah, sorry, we had a question. We we presented to Yarranger's Tourism today, and also our council. And council was actually asking a question of you. Uh, they would like to know because the Archies is coming, and they want to know whether your whether they should put their energy into doing another Not the Archies um, thing around Hillsville, yeah. uh, whether you like that idea or whether the energy should go into something else. Mm -hmm. That's a good idea. So, yeah, what do you think? Is the Not the Archies a good thing? Yeah. Well, it's very successful. It was. Um, <coughs> Archie Walls had their own, um, their own motor, if you like, it yeah. produces yeah. and generates, <coughs> yeah. and to have something that, that uh, became local. The thing that did happen was um, you had an overflow of people. At the, the first time they did the Archibald, the overflow of people in town was fantastic because um, they, they, yeah, they weren't, they weren't organised. Yeah. The worst thing that happened is that they actually got organised. <laughs> oh. and, and they put timing bookings, and bookings and on yeah. people. And that was probably the, the, so the, that was the downfall of it because yeah. people just turned up and said, oh, Oh, nine o'clock, we can't get in until two. Oh, so they came yeah. to the town and they moved around. Oh, when they took a booking, they'd gone up two o'clock, so they arrived at two, went to sleep, left. So the, the second time it wasn't successful. So that's I think if we can upset their booking, <laughs> <laughs> it would be good. Well. But, that, but it was, it was, was good though, because we had all the artwork in our windows. Well, and not the arches. Well, not the arches, we had each shop, and we all had. Okay. So produced an, an additional a lot of thing. Yeah, another sure reason to come. Yeah. Yeah. And I think they also did it in some other towns as well. So yeah. Hills was like the epicentre, yeah, okay. and then you had other towns that also had Not the Archies works on their walls, on yeah, their no, windows as well. Great. Great. So is there anyone who doesn't yeah. like Not the Archies? Anyone who thinks it's not a good idea? Okay, does anyone think it's a better idea? Okay, so we should go back and tell them we like that you like the idea. You want okay, well that's good. Well, council they want to they want to kind of go with what you want. Yeah. Would you be yeah. interested in having our artists' artworks absolutely. on your walls on an ongoing basis? At, at varying times, yeah, varying absolutely. Times, yeah. We always find that sort of thing. Uh, so as what you're trying to do is develop the Yarra Valley as, a, yeah. as, an, as another spoke yeah. in the wheel. Yeah. And we've got to all be with that. Because yeah. if anyone can bring another person through our door, yeah. it's, it's benefited. Because if you've got a piece of, of um, Bev's artwork in your mm. in your store, we can promote that on our social media. Yeah, absolutely. So it yeah. should drive. Yeah. Is that OK, Bev? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Bev. We can actually drive people into your store to see her artwork. I think that this, this place will will serve a couple of different purposes. And one of those purposes I think is really important is retention of people in the area. Yeah. You know, if someone wants to go and get a coffee, go and visit a library, come to a gallery, and then they're gonna go out and go and maybe get some lunch or something after that. Mm, and if we can keep the people in the area, and, and, and the, the good thing about <coughs> us is we, we don't conflict with anyone. We, we add value, mm -hmm. and, 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 and that's at, at its core. We add value to what people are doing exist, you know, out there. And we're also planning to do some things like um, maybe create some, go into the experience idea. Like for example, uh, there's a thing about transformational experiences. That's kind of what people are looking for right now. Like they want to be able, to, when it comes to, let's say there might be a bus, a bunch of, you know, women or friends or whatever. People come from Melbourne and they come to the Yarra Valley for a night or two nights, it could be midweek, you know, um, and they come here and they do some kind of artistic, you know, the art program of the arts that pr provides a transformational experience for them. They experience it together. They stay here in someone's accommodation. They eat meals. 
and they drink our wine and they rewrap it all in together and it's like, wow, okay, we've actually had something which was really cool. Mm -hmm. That's kind of our vision for being able to sort of spread that. Mm -hmm. Suzanne? I think one of the observations that I made from what the Archies was that some people in town said, uh, mm -hmm. others said were so enthusiastic and those who in actual fact didn't have the enthusiasm completely missed out. If the whole town is doing it in some way, even if everybody is doing it in a small way, if the whole town is in it, then you get this amazing energy, which whether you like it or not, it's an energy that is infectious and it spreads the town's message so much better than one end of the town doing it well and the other end not doing it. And some businesses missed out completely when there were people driving out of town to Lilydale to get food because there were, the restaurants in town couldn't service the people that were here. So I think when, if you do wish to do something like that, when you've got such a huge number of people in town, if you could talk all your mates into being in it at the same time, so that everybody does get an experience. And, and I think that, in some yeah, and I think that goes to communication as well. Yes. So, you know, I think the more we communicate that these events are happening and how can we leverage it, I think that will be really powerful. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're going to have a major kind of event happening. Um, Andrew mentioned the exhibition with Vincent Pantorzo in September. So we're deliberately having our big event for that, where we will attract major media for that. Um, on the 5th of September, which is one week before Tarawara. And we're doing it intentionally because we want to drag them here first. So come here, um, we'll bring the song and dance, and you have to wait another week for Tarawara, right? So then you can come back to Tarawara, Tarawara but you already know that Hillsville's awesome. Mm -hmm. So you're going to come back again and have a meal or have do whatever you want to do. So we're kind of thinking about that. We will also tie it in. So we're leveraging the, the Archibald for bringing, pe dragging people here. And so then we'll have not the Archies, so everyone can have, you know, not the Archies um, portraits on their windows, which makes it much more cohesive and comprehensive experience. Uh, and then we will have our, um, you know, local Yarra Valley artists here, that exhibition, and we might do some workshops and talks <coughs> and so forth that further kind of sort of takes advantage of the whole theme of portraiture for a month. Any other questions? Can I just say, Claire, yeah. um, somebody touched on something before which came up um, with the council and tourism people at the briefing this morning, and that the council finds it quite difficult to uh, communicate and coordinate with the traders in Hillsville in particular, um, compared to some other towns. And they were rather hoping that we might be uh, a facility, I think, and a sort of a, a facilitator to, to bring a little bit more formality or, or coordination uh, with the traders and the retailers for a, as a communications sort of channel, if you like. And I guess we're wondering what people think about that. I mean, some of you were involved in the past in terms of a uh, chamber of commerce and it's gone a bit by the wayside, but there seems to be a lot of energy and a lot of new people that I've been talking to for months who are keen to have some um, uh, some coordination and some information so everybody can share it, but at the moment the council ha doesn't have a vehicle to communicate. Have any, any, any of you sort of got a view about about whether there should be a new, you know, or even an informal place for people to meet and, and uh, hear from council or hear from tourism about, you know, what's possible and have a communication channel? Or maybe a different avenue to that is like, is it would it be valued if it wasn't formalised? Then, if we had a monthly gather on the balcony and have a glass of wine yeah, and like talk about business, like would that be useful to you? So it's two questions. It's one is, do we create something? Is there some value that you would have as local traders and retailers and business people to have some kind of thing which is not with all those horrible rules? Um, and also, or is there a social something that would be useful to you? I don't know. Sounds positive. Mm -hmm. Actually, you want to put yourselves up for that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We like being on the balcony. It's a good idea. How do you know what's going on, Phil? Or how does it yeah, like, do you, is it important to you from Giant Steps to know what, or for other people in town to know what's going on at Giant Steps? Oh yes. Um, 
I don't even know what the situation with Chamber of Commerce is. I sort there of read very quiet. Yeah. It's gone. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. It, it, so a, it was extremely strongly used as a, an example um, throughout through the local government as a as this was a, a thriving community with an extremely strong chamber, and uh, we had a, uh, a couple of issues there, and it. Uh, uh, to say the wheels fell off it, uh, we've been known to scrape and we had uh, some, uh, some fraud and bits and pieces that uh, was uh, a, a bad thing that uh, took away everyone's energy, if you like. Yeah. It would be, it's been a few years now, so it'd certainly be worth um, going back through and having another look at under another, uh, obviously another banner. But um, yeah, it, it worked very well, there were some very energetic people in it. And the, the conduit through the councils and through Tourism Victoria was excellent. And that gave out a feeder out through the traders and through the retailers and stuff. Okay. It linked in with, there's another a couple of uh, organisations that have, have developed other little formats through wineries and, and other areas, but nothing specific for Hillsville. Uh, in the Yarra Valley, Hillsville is the dynamic Centre, mm -hmm. uh, the wineries in the in the region, the restaurants, the retailers. We've got oh, Creswick has just opened up, and that is a dynamic business. That is, they don't come to a town unless it's it's going to be something pretty good. So there's some faith in the in the town. Um, it now is probably ready for a, a new uh, the rebirth of a, a chamber of some type, and with this, with the tourism of Victoria, with the local council, it's probably time to, to start something up again. Uh, but it, it needs people with some time and, and some energy. And, and if you can provide that, you know, that, that nucleus, we, we can find some followers pretty quick. Uh, what do you so fear, Bill? Did you say fear? Yeah. What do you fear? I don't fear anything. Um, Dan, well, apart from boredom and um, <laughs> waste, <laughs> and waste, waste of time. Yeah. Um, and That's the thing. It has to be. Yeah. But I mean, yeah. there's, I mean, some of us communicate with councils for our various organisations, and I think that's become the informal way. So a lot of our communication is through the wine growers association, through yeah. tourism people. Yeah. Um, but what you're offering here is is another conduit of people who are involved with this with you. And so I think that's, that's very useful. That's probably why they put back to you as well. This, this is a, a conduit that may be another way to talk to people in use So I think it's great, but I just don't want to over um, formalise it. No. Yeah. Because, oh, you know, for the minutes mm -hmm. and yeah. the yeah. and the yeah. 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 Okay, so, the, yeah. 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 so yeah. Keith and then I think yeah. Susanna yeah. 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 a whole range of businesses um, from accommodation right through to retail and, and um, supply. Uh, it's, we, we do 
the soiree you mentioned out there where we talk business, we, we have one of those each month. Um, and we've had them throughout um, the district in Healesville. We just had one at Narbathong. We've got one coming up at Garrigan shortly. <coughs> so we invite all business people to come along and um, and that's what we do. We talk business. So you can invite us. Yes, yes. exactly. There yep. you go. And, uh, you know, we, and w once you get there, we... Um, we lean on you a bit to join our association, but yeah, right. uh, not, okay. not necessarily. So, yeah. so that's uh, just something uh, for people to keep in mind. There's an avenue <coughs> for businesses to get together and um, uh, you know share business ideas and make contacts. And Brilliant. Yeah. That's great. So thank you. That's great. And I would say, um, if anyone hasn't already, it'd be really good if you just write down your email addresses on that thing when you walked in the door. Um, I think probably times, probably from a time perspective, and we welcome to have another cocktail. I think. Um, thanks to. Is that right? No. Can we have another drink? Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> um, I'm gonna have one. Um, so yeah, but maybe we could just have a chat, and I'm just aware that everyone's had a long day at work, and we wanted to say thank you so much for um, for being already kind of part of this and. For those of you who've been giving us encouragement from the line, sidelines, as I said, we really want to partnership, partner with you. If you have thoughts, ideas, please talk to Andrew. Um, please talk to any of us. Anyone who's got a, you know, we would be very much, uh, we're looking forward to working with you. Thanks. Definitely. I think it's uh, a great initiative of the Arrow Valley Arts. Um, hopefully it'll bring in a lot of different type of people that will be interested in art and also go and have uh, you know, food and, and wine as well. Um, I can see it being a, a great um, draw card for the town, hopefully, and, and hopefully we sell some art. I think it's very exciting, yes. I, um I've been along for the ride and it's getting more and more exciting as we go. I've been part of the process of turning this room into a gallery and it's a very exciting thing, yeah. Hillsville, Hillsville's changing and it's great to be part of that change. Well, yes I do. Um, being uh, in uh, accommodation and in the uh, tourism industry, uh, we're always looking to broaden the base of the people who come to Hillsville. So I think uh, if they can uh, achieve the goals they've set for themselves, I can see it'll be very positive for the town. And uh, certainly if they can uh, put um, develop the artworks that they're talking about and, and maybe even some street art then that will certainly uh, add something different to Hillsville as well. Do I think Yava might be good for the town? Of course I do. Um, and um, I think that in all things I think what it has to do is very quickly um, become financially sustainable uh, because that makes it healthy. Um, and so I'm encouraging Yava to, to, to actually be quite commercial in the way they are, are, are putting their pitch. We're here to sell paintings, we're here to provide a market for artists, we're here to put on events and we want you to pay for those events. Um, and with that financial imperative, um, I think also the gaps can be filled by establishing relationships with businesses like ours who totally support what, what's happening here. Um, in many ways, the last thing we want to see in the Yarra Valley is another restaurant. We'd much rather see cultural and interesting experiences. As an artist, I'd like to be able to show my artworks here, of course, and, and because it's out in the big wide world and, and a lot of people will see it, hopefully. So hopefully I'll get to sell some. <laughs> and pe well, people will get to know different artists in the area as well. And um, I mean, I live in Hoddles Creek, so it's a little bit not quite in Hillsville. So um, I'm a member of Yarra Valley Arts and so hopefully it'll, you know, showcase the, the local artists and show, us, show people out there what we can do. Mm. I, think it's I think it's going to work because of the number of people that are around, the people, the tourists in particular, but the locals as well. I think it'll work 
as it grows and people know more about it and it connects more and more. Music in here is going to be an important part of it. It's going to be heard down in the street. It's going to be people are going to come because they'll come as an audience and they're going to see what's happening around. So I think that's a really important part of it. But so are the other other arts. It's going to be to me. It's the exciting thing. I'm a visual artist, but to me the exciting thing will be making all of the arts work together and work as a in the one space, it will be very exciting. Well, yes, because I'm an accommodation provider, so uh, hopefully there's one more thing for people to do in Hillsville, one more reason to come, and hopefully they come and stay a night, and if they do, they can stay with us. Uh, no, I've just walked in here tonight, and I've, I've soaked it all in, and I've, I've connected with Andrew, saying, hey, let's, let's talk and let's start emailing with each other, because I have some vague ideas, but... Um, um, and the cooperative activities, I think. Um, you know, and I think the other thing is, is a, uh, when people are starting organisations like this, they uh, are thinking we're looking for commercial opportunities. We're not. Um, I think in many ways um, you can get engagement with businesses by working together without actually seeking commercial input from them. I, you know, I'd hate to see our name all over things, and it's not what we do. Uh, but at the same time, if there's something we can do with uh, a group of artists that helps them and is interesting for us uh, and actually helps the overall community, we're, we're really into it, yes. They've sort of covered it pretty well, actually. I mean, because I'm on the committee as well, and uh, so I know what's been happening. Um, I do like the idea of them um, having workshops and and all sorts of things like soirees and musical recitals and whatever they're going to have here um, that will bring other people in and not just be relying on people that might be interested in art. So it's going to, you know, art on walls, it's going to be all sorts of different kinds of art which I think is really um, really good for everybody. So it's, yeah, not everyone likes art on walls, it might be they like music or, you know, listening to poetry. So hopefully um, it'll cater for most people. It'll be really good. Well, they've pretty well covered all of the things. They, they, they in fact, have moved beyond my vision. So it's, uh, it's great hearing Kate talking about, and Andrew talking about other possibilities. Uh, the street art things are pretty exciting. And already, you know, we've had two walls offered to us. Getting other artists in to do that, I'd, I'd love to design a, a wall. That'd be very exciting. Yeah. So, yeah, I think other people are... Ex That's the point of the thing. Creative people extend each other. That's what I'm looking forward to. No, not, not that I can think of uh, uh, right now, but I think if, as I said a moment ago, if they can achieve the things they set out for us tonight in the presentation, I think um, that would be great for them, uh, for us and for the town and the valley as a whole. No, 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 I, I raised the question about the financial imperative. I think, you know, I've, I've been involved in these things before and... Um, you know, at the end of the day, if it's continually having to seek donations, um, it's going to make it really hard. Whereas, you know, I think Yava's got a great opportunity, and I'm just looking around the walls here, and I'm assuming these are local artists. Uh, they've got a great opportunity to get to get this art on display and on sale, and I think they might be surprised.